British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is set to defend his government's immigration partnership with Rwanda if the heir to the British throne, Prince Charles, raises it with him when the two meet. British newspapers have reported that Charles had privately criticised the plans under which asylum seekers will be deported to Rwanda. Anybody who comes in, uh, I'm delighted that all the, 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 uh, uh, the, the Prince Charles and everybody is here today to see a country that is, uh, I think, undergone a, a complete transformation or a very, very substantial transformation. Uh, and Are you willing I think to defend the I think should that, he raise it? I think that um, people need to keep uh, an open mind about uh, the policy, Those, uh, the, the critics need to keep an open mind about it. I think a, a lot of people can see its, its obvious merits. And yeah, of course, if, uh, to, uh, if, I'm, if I'm seeing the, uh, the Prince tomorrow, I'm of course going to make that point. And you will defend it if he raises it? Yeah, I mean, it hasn't come up so far, but of course. Joining us now via Zoom is Paul Ejime, an international affairs expert. Good evening, Minister Paul. Glad to have you on the news tonight. Thank you, Lamy. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Now, the ongoing meeting of Commonwealth leaders in Kigali, what do you think African leaders will be telling all the world leaders? So, um, Commonwealth um, Organization of the you know, as you know, is an association of 54 countries uh, grouping, um, you know, both the rich the middle income and then the poor, you know, or the poorest. Um, I think they have about 17 or 19 African countries there. So in the usual thing, you know, trying to talk network to see how um, they can get support in areas that um, they are deficient. Uh, trade, for instance, I also talking about malaria and um, uh, neglected tropical disease. They will talk about technology. They will talk about um, the effect of uh, climate change and then um, other, other issues. So there's a lot to discuss. But you also know that um, uh, Rwanda is on the um, uh, spotlight for what the British Prime Minister is, has talked about. Rwanda and uh, uh, Britain have talked about uh, immigration. Immigration is one area that is also very uh, topical. And these two countries have entered into a partnership to now process um, uh, immigrants, those wanting to go to Britain, through uh, Rwanda. That has generated a lot of uh, uh, disputes. But um, uh, that aside, it's a usual meeting, normally held every two years, but it didn't hold um, in the last two years. It was postponed because of uh, COVID. But um, um, the organization has its own benefits to Africans. Remember that um, in terms of education, many um, uh, hundreds of Africans have benefited from what you call the Commonwealth uh, Scholarship. And they also do um, uh, sports. Remember the Commonwealth Games. And, um, and so on and so forth. So it has um, its benefits. Uh, but some are saying perhaps it's not uh, uh, it's a, a, a collection of uh, former colonies and then um, and they have colonial power. But uh, the world needs um, uh, collaboration and cooperation. That's what I would say. All right. Um, uh, in the meeting, topics ranging from uh, green energy to rising food prices and uh, to the war in Ukraine, those are among the uh, top of the agenda. What do you think uh, the leaders should take away from it and what do you think is most important and how should they implement this, these policies? Well, I think the richer or the rich ones amongst them, there's Australia, there's Canada, uh, India is also there and so on. And um, they would also be able to support them um, uh, those that um, are poor in, um, in, in, uh, in that association, they are talking, for instance, about um, the team, is about um, delivering um, a common future, um, uh, connecting, innovating, and then um, transforming. Um, a lot can come from there. Um, but but um, it depends on what Africans are going there to do. 
if they go there to, um, you don't give, you are not given anything if you don't ask. But they should also not be negotiating from a position of uh, weakness. I think um, they should also be asking for trade, not just aid. Let them ask for trade and uh, be competitive. Uh, they haven't done so for a very long time. And um, because of the kind of uh, uh, the commodity that they are selling. But um, they can't do that in, uh, during one um, one summit. Okay. But this is an organization that also, this is the second time I think they are holding it in, um, in Africa after uh, Uganda. And also remember that uh, Nigeria's their own um, Chief Emeka Anyoko was um, a secretary general for that organization from 1989 to 2000. And when um, he was very useful in fighting apartheid, and then also when Nigeria was, um, uh, you know, uh, executed Kensaro Uba and all that, uh, it was suspended. So it's, um, it's being used as um, the foreign minister, for instance, they have a, a foreign minister committee that tries to uh, talk about human rights, about democracy, and other things that, um, uh, you know, are topical in the world. So these are the things that Africa should be looking at trade. And then remember now, you mentioned the uh, Ukraine, um, a food crisis because of the war. Um, they can now, on the sidelines, talk about how they can collaborate and be able to uh, uh, deal with that. But for Britain, I think it, it suits them because they are to trying to find a way after the after Brexit. I think um, they are looking for more partners from um, outside Europe. Okay. So it depends on what you are coming to the table with. All right, One so finally, finally, to sorry to cut there you there. Sorry yeah. to cut you there. What's your final message to the leaders at the summit, including President Buhari? Well, um, he's already there. Uh, if he's listening, is to go there and then maximize the, his attendance of that meeting in terms of what will be uh, will he bring? For instance, malaria is a very uh, uh, dangerous uh, disease that killed uh, uh, millions or thousands of uh, Africans, including in Nigeria. And there hasn't been any vaccine for that. Children under five are dying. Women, uh, pregnant women, are dying, and other diseases that are you know they call them neglected because they've been they've been uh, uh, dealt with in other places. If that can be what, um, if, well, if that is one thing that um, in, uh, uh, an African leader can go and ask for support to be able to see that uh, there are no deaths and then the affliction from these uh, neglected diseases are no longer there. I think it will be one, uh, one, one, uh, 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 you know, take away from there. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for your contributions tonight. Paul Ejime is an international affairs uh, expert. Thank you so much. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.